I'm very pleased to be here, be here with Professor Uwe Ewald from Uppsala University in Sweden. And uh, thank you very much for joining me today. I have just a couple of questions to ask you. First of all, there's many complex influences on a mother's decision to breastfeed. And I know here in Uppsala that you very focus very much on the socio-economic side of, of uh, breastfeeding and neonatal care. Can you tell me how you first got interested in this? Well, it's difficult to remember, of course. Uh, it, I've always been interested how, uh, how families or women in this situation make decisions and what governs their decisions. And uh, obviously one important uh, uh, background is that when I was a young doctor, breastfeeding rates in Sweden was very, very low. And uh, we puzzled a lot about why they had decreased. And uh, we also discussed a lot what could we do in order to increase breastfeeding rates. They were low down to 20, 25%. Oh. So they were very, very low. And uh, of course, at that time, uh, in the 60s, it was also very much debated about uh, the role of manufacturers of formula and their advertisement and promotion of formulas. But there were many other factors and uh, obviously factors related to uh, social class and economic possibilities and uh, also the role of uh, the society in, in uh, which way they looked upon the family. Already at that time we know that uh, uh, social background, experience from the grandmother or support from the father was a very important issue in making a decision to stop breastfeeding or also to the duration of breastfeeding. And the impact of these issues on the length of women, the length of time that women spend breastfeeding, there's a, a big impact? Mm -hmm. There are uh, good evidence, but they are not uh, consistent always. There are uh, changes over time. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, at the moment in Sweden, uh, breastfeeding rates are going down. They're from, going down? Going down from very high level. Okay. And um, when breastfeeding rates increased in Sweden some 40 years ago, uh, uh, it was a more educated women who took the lead. Okay. And uh, later the uh, less uh, school educated women followed. Mm -hmm. And it became a very breastfeeding uh, positive culture in Sweden. Also the society and uh, the support, support system of the society were very generous for, for uh, supporting families and supporting mothers. And why do you think the breastfeeding rates are going down again? I, I don't know really. It could also be that um, you live more uh, in a complex society today, in a more open and outside from the home. You are not spending so much hours in your home. We have something we call the latte generation. Okay. Women are uh, not only spending time in the families, they are spending time with friends and colleagues and, uh, and uh, that is called latte generation. So if you go uh, in Sweden today in the cities there are a lot of cafes. Yes. yes. A lot of cafes and uh, outside the cafes you see a lot of uh, this... Uh, Mothers with babies in pushchairs. Uh, okay. Advice from professionals are not uh, very well coordinated about breastfeeding, as you know. Yes. If you go to one profession, no, she says you should do like this. The next midwife will tell something different. I, fortunately, I have to agree with that. Yes, it does happen. Yes, absolutely. One, one issue which was quite uh, important in increasing rates of breastfeeding in Sweden was uh, peer or voluntary organizations. Peer support groups, yes, yes. 
and uh, they collaborated very much with uh, uh, the hospital systems. Yes. And I think uh, perhaps that has also weakened the last years. Mm -hmm. that, uh, these volunteer organizations are not longer as strong as they were 25, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And in the neonatal unit, do you find that there is also this peer support and the breastfeeding rates are, are, are stable? Well, uh, it is uh, quite stable, I think. It has uh, a quite high level in Sweden today is that uh, even uh, preterm babies spending long periods in an ICU, they will be disturbed. Uh, that leads me on to ask you about the, the, the talk that you're going to be giving in uh, our seventh international symposium. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the main points you will bring across here? Well, I haven't decided yet the okay. main points, <laughs> but uh, probably I will uh, focus on uh, the ICU, mm -hmm. the situation of families in the ICU the effect of uh, a more family-centered environment in the ICU and how to uh, uh, change the, the routines in the ICU to be more uh, communicative and uh, not so much uh, uh, goal-orientated or task-orientated that mm -hmm. uh, breastfeeding is not uh, to, to uh, to achieve a certain goal, it should uh, more be to make uh, something improve in, uh, in the relation between uh, the mother and the child. To be more mm. emotional filled and more relational and uh, help the family and help the mother to, to become a family and to become a mother. Thank you.